A couple of months ago, I received a package with this little guy. It's the Polaroid Now Instant Camera. And yes, it's the Mandalorian edition, so take a minute to make all of your Star Wars jokes. I don't know, may the clean rollers be with you. This is the instant way. Okay, if you think you could do better, leave them down in the comments. Anyways, this is actually the first brand new Polaroid camera that I've ever bought. Heck, it's the first brand new camera of any kind that I bought since 2008, when I bought my first DSLR. And I feel that for many film shooters, including myself, the idea of buying a brand new camera may feel a little strange. After all, we are so used to choosing from a multitude of easy-to-find second-hand options that are almost guaranteed to be a better bang for your buck. So when it comes to Polaroids, does it make sense to buy one of the models that they are currently offering? How do those models compare to the classic 600 series cameras? That's what we are here to find out. I'm Leonie Kishin, this is 10 Rolls of Film, let's do this. First, let's meet the contestants. In the right corner, we have Polaroid 660 Autofocus. It was introduced all the way back in the early 1980s, and as the model number implies, it uses the classic Polaroid 600 film. I bought this guy on the Dutch equivalent of eBay slash Craigslist and paid 30 euro shipped. In the left corner, we have the brand new Polaroid Now. It was introduced in 2020, and as all currently produced Polaroid models, it can take both the classic 600 Polaroid film and the new i-type film. We'll talk about that later. Uh, the normal version of this camera usually sells for the whopping 130 euro, but I got this Mandalorian edition while it was on sale, so it cost me 80 euro shipped. I'll be honest, I cannot bring myself to keep referring to this camera as the now, so I'm just going to call it the Mandalorian from this point onwards, and you'll have to deal with that. I think these two models in particular match up quite nicely, because they are both what you might call enthusiast-level cameras. They are a step above the simplest Polaroids out there, and provide some degree of precision and creative control. You have things like exposure compensation, or flash override, or autofocus. But they are not stepping into the professional territory either, compared to something like SX-70 or SLR-680. They have plastic lenses, and the autofocus, while nice, is not actually that precise. There is no direct control over things like aperture and shutter speeds, and so on. Right off the bat, the biggest difference is that the 660 can be folded when not in use, while the Mandalorian is a rigid design. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? It depends. If you plan to mostly have the camera hanging around your neck, then it is not going to make that much of a difference. If anything, the rigid design will be quicker to be ready to shoot. If, on the other hand, you are planning to just, you know, throw the camera into a backpack or a bag and uh, have it with you through the day, then a folding design does have advantages, because it does protect the more fragile elements of the camera when you are not using it. So, you know, things like the lenses, the viewfinder, the autofocus sensor, things like that. The Mandalorian, on the other hand, has no protection for the lens. Uh, and, you know, there is no lens cap in the box, and you cannot buy it as an accessory either. And, personally, I would not be comfortable with just throwing this camera into a backpack where, you know, there are keys and pencils and whatever else just shuffling around. Uh, because the front element, even though it's recessed a little bit, is not protected by anything. And it's really a mystery to me why the Polaroid went to the trouble of ribbing this ring around the lens and yet didn't provide a thread or any other means to attach a lens cap. I think it's a real oversight. In terms of overall build quality, these cameras are pretty similar. 
I do feel that the plastic on the 660 is a bit thicker and also has a nicer texture and grip to it. It's a little bit more comfortable to hold somehow. Um, there's nothing wrong with the plastic on the Mandalorian either, and I think it looks really nice, especially in this paint scheme. But it's that little bit more slippery and a little bit... It feels a bit thinner. I'm not sure it is, but it feels thinner. Um, but well, no problems with it so far, so we will see. In terms of design, it's clear that these two cameras come from completely different eras. Uh, personally, I prefer the design of the Mandalorian a bit better. I think it's uh, a nice blend of modern touches, references to Mandalorian, uh, but also references to some of the old Polaroid models, like the 5000 series. But of course, there is uh, a certain charm to the chunky, angled style of the early 80s as well. So if that's your thing, you know what to go for. Controls on the 660 are quite Spartan, but that's mostly a good thing, I think. There is an obligatory film pack release slider right here, which opens the camera. Then at the front, there is a rather self-explanatory over and under compensation. So that's overexposure, normal, underexposure. Then at the back, there is a simple mechanical exposure counter. It's not showing anything right now because there is no film pack inside. And then really it's just this assembly right here. Uh, the red button is your main shutter release, and it does two things. Half press charges the flash, and you will get an indicator in the viewfinder, a red lamp. Uh, and once the red lamp goes off, the flash is fully charged and ready to fire. Then you can pull it back all the way, and it will take a picture with the flash. If you want to take a picture without a flash, you have to engage this inconspicuous black lever just behind the red button and pull it back. It will still do the shutter release thing, but it will not engage or charge the flash. And really, that's about it uh, as far as the controls on the 660. But actually, there is one more that I think not too many people are aware of. is this little guy right here. And that is an infinity lock. So if you press it for one shot, the camera will lock the focus to infinity. And it can be a very useful feature because I think it was primarily designed uh, to allow, for example, tourists to take shots through a bus or train windows, things like that. So, you know, when you're shooting through something close by, but you want to focus reliably at something at a distance. So I think it's actually quite useful. Controls on the Mandalorian are quite different, and so are some of the functions. First up, we need to power the camera, and that's our power switch right there. This is our frame counter. And personally, I prefer the mechanical one on the 660 because I can see it when, even when the camera is off and folded. Um, then we have a large and nice red shutter release button at the front. Uh, and it works much like a shutter release button on almost any digital camera, so half press to focus, full press to take a picture. Also on the front we have a self-timer button, which does two things. Press one, press once, and it will engage a nine-second self-timer. Press twice, and it will engage a double exposure mode. And you will get an indication here in the viewfinder, in, sorry, in the display of the first and second shot. You can't take more than two shots on the same sheet of film, but well, better than nothing. Then on the back, we have a flash button. Press it once, and it disengages the flash for one shot. Press it twice, and the flash will stay off till you power off the camera. I think that's quite useful because uh, 
if you're trying to do another do a whole sequence without a flash it will save you time and uh, worry so that's quite nice but there's actually one more function also hidden under the flash button if you press and hold it for a second then you engage exposure compensation mode and that's your overexposure underexposure and normal exposure so you see it just moves in the in the display here over under normal i think that's actually quite neat then there is the obligatory film pack release button which allows you to open the camera and finally there is a charging port on the side here a micro usb charging port which leads us neatly to the films that these cameras are using As I mentioned in the beginning, the 660 uses the classic Polaroid 600 film and it uses the exact same cartridge as all the way back in the 1980s when it was first introduced, same time as this camera. However, all of the currently produced Polaroid models can also use the i-type film. What's the difference? Well, the emulsion is exactly the same, so things like color, contrast, sensitivity, and so on, are identical. However, there is one very important difference. You see, every Polaroid 600 film pack has a small battery built into it, and that's what powers all of the camera functions. There is no battery in the camera itself. However, all of the modern Polaroid cameras have a rechargeable battery built into them. So there is no need to have a battery in the film pack. And that's what iType film is. It's the same exact film as the 600 film, but without the battery. And that's the reason why the Mandalorian has a charging port on the side, while a 660 does not. iType film tends to be slightly cheaper, and at least where I am located, it tends to get discounted more often and pop up cheaper on local marketplace sites. That said, there are quite a few special editions and things like this yellow dual chrome that are only released as 600 film. So it's definitely nice that Polaroid kept their current offerings compatible with the 600 film as well. Officially, you can only use 600 film in the legacy Polaroid cameras like this 660 that we have here. But actually, there is a rather crude but efficient way to use the i-type film in these cameras as well. All we need to make that happen, apart from a fresh pack of i-type film, of course, is a relatively fresh, empty 600 film cartridge, which is what we have right here. So what we need to do is to get the battery out of this, because you see, even though each 600 film cartridge has a battery built into it, the battery is actually powerful enough and has enough capacity to power three to four packs rather than one. So it's still full of juice. We just need to cut it open with a pair of scissors. Not the prettiest, but not the hardest. Be careful with the plastic, with the metal parts because they tend to be quite sharp. Just cut this up. Don't worry, this plastic is not going to be reused for anything, so we can just cut right through it. It's a fairly thin plastic too. And there is our battery, this guy. Next, we need to take our pack of fresh iType film. Next thing we need to do is we need to file down this little notch right here. It, it has a corresponding groove 
in the i-type cameras, but there isn't one in the 600 series cameras. So let me just walk over to my kitchen counter and file this down. So this is what it should look like when you're done filing. See, it's flat, nothing is sticking out. It's okay if there is a tiny bit, but not the whole thing. Little note, be careful not to press on the dark slide or cover frame while you do this because you may ex expose the emulsions underneath it to light and yeah, well, that will not be good as you can imagine. Next thing we need to do is we open our 600 series camera, take our battery, take our cartridge and we sandwich them together and make sure that the contacts of the battery are pointing further into the camera and down. So like this. And this is the sandwich that we will slide into the camera. Just like so. You may have to push the battery in first and then slide the film pack above it. There's a spring underneath. So you just hold it there. And then you pull them and then you pull them together. You may have to apply a bit of force. That's okay. Till it clicks in place. And then you're done. It will feel very snug. But don't worry, there's nothing you can damage there. And I've did this many times and it's okay. And there's your proof. The dark slide is out. So the battery works and we're good to go. In my experience, the results are identical between using an actual Polaroid 600 film in the 660 and using the i-type film the, with the method I just showed you. So to keep this test as fair as possible and to make sure that all the differences are down to the cameras and not the film, I'm using the same film, the color i-type film, the metallic edition, um, in both cameras. So they are from the same batch with the same expiration date, uh, same version. So everything we see, any difference we see is down to the cameras. So let me just load this into the Mandalorian. Yep. Okay. Now these cameras are loaded and we're ready to shoot. And we will start with a fairly common and easy scenario. It's a well-lit room, big window, Half-length portrait, flash on. Let's do this. Okay. Which camera do you like better on the outside? Mm. This one seems more professional, but this one is cuter. Okay. You don't mind this being a Mandalorian? A little bit, but it's cute. <laughs> Fair enough. small I had um, a Polaroid camera from Barbie. It was pink. Ooh, one of those. It had flowers and the photos came out in a pink frame with flowers. I still have some of the... <laughs> are you recording this? <laughs> the first test shots are developing so this is a good time to talk about ergonomics. And if you look at these cameras from above you can see there are a few differences. Uh, 
on the 660, the viewfinder tunnel is quite long and the eyepiece that sits at the end of it is quite soft and big uh, and very comfortable. And because the viewfinder is so far out, you don't have to mash your face against the camera. Like there's definitely a comfortable amount of space here. And yeah, it's just a nice thing to hold. The Mandalorian has a much shorter viewfinder tunnel and there is no eyepiece at the end of it at all for some reason. So it means that you are going to mash your face into the camera itself. It's not an unpleasant surface to touch and it's not a sharp edge, so it's okay. But still, it's just not that nice. You just, you just have to, you know, mash into it a little and I don't know. I just don't find it very, an, a very nice experience somehow. There's also another uh, sort of ergonomical fault that I find with the Mandalorian is that because we have the shutter release button at the front here and then the area where your thumb naturally rests is around here, there's just very little space. It's very close by and it just feels a little cramped. It feels like your fingers have to be very close and I don't know, it just doesn't feel secure somehow. It also doesn't help in this the respect that the camera is lighter. Uh, on the 660, okay, originally Polaroid thought that the thumb was going to rest here. I disagree. I think the thumb should rest here because then you have this very nice, very relaxed position with plenty of space for the thumb. So here is the 660 and here is the Mandalorian. And right away we can see that the two cameras exposed quite differently. The 660 seems to have gone for a faster shutter speed. That's how we get this very dark background behind the model. And you saw the footage, it was taken in daylight. Uh, and then applied quite a strong flash on the subject so that the subject is well lit. I think it's a nice exposure, looks good. Uh, it's just not very reflective of the conditions in which the shot was taken. And the Mandalorian actually does something much closer to a fill flash. So, you know, we still have plenty of detail and plenty of light on the background. It's also a slightly wider lens, as you can see. You know, if you, if you just see the, where the lamp is in the shot. Uh, and then, you know, there's plenty of exposure on the, on the subject, but it's, it's sort of a more balanced exposure overall. Looks like it didn't prioritize the subject as much. So, you know, it really is a question of just what kind of look you prefer. If you prefer a more, you know, classic, uh, flash look than 660 is what you want to do. Uh, but to me the Mandalorian actually looks really nice as well. Uh, a little note here which I think is quite important. Because Mandalorian tends to almost overexpose the shots, it takes longer for the shot to achieve its final brightness, if that makes sense. So you know when it develops after you've taken the shot and ejected from the camera, it takes longer for overexposed shots to develop completely uh, because at first it will look wildly overdeveloped, wildly overexposed and uh, kind of scare you. But actually, given enough time, it will darken very nicely. Another pair from the same scene and very much the same result. Since the two shots are so different, I don't think there is a, there is a way of comparing them objectively. It comes down to subjective preference. And personally, I could go with either one. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna call this one a draw. Next stop, landscape shots in daylight. So I'm going to turn off the flash and focus at or near infinity. There is a infinity lock on the 660, which I'm going to use. No such feature on the Mandalorian, so it will have to figure out the focusing all by itself. Now, let's get something straight. These cameras were primarily designed to take pictures of people at medium to short distances with a flash on. And even though they do have the, cap the capacity to take pictures without a flash and focus at infinity, uh, I'm definitely pushing them out of their comfort zone here. And sure enough, both cameras have design flaws that are actively preventing me from getting optimal results. The 660 starts off strong because it has a tripod socket. But then it doesn't have a remote of any kind or a self-timer 
or a Bluetooth connectivity that would allow you to trigger it from a phone, like for example, the modern One Step Plus does. And that sort of defeats the purpose of having the tripod socket in the first place. The Mandalorian does have a self-timer. It's this button on the front right here. But then it doesn't have a tripod socket. Yes, you can sort of kind of use the Mandalorian on a tripod with the help of a tablet tripod holder like this. Just make sure that it extends out enough because it's, you need either 12 centimeters or 11 to 12 centimeters if you want to go across like this. And you need about 15 if you want to go on the long side. So just make sure that the holder you have or are buying goes both narrow enough and wide enough. It's still clumsy, it's not optimal, but well, it's better than nothing. But you know what, for this landscape test, since one camera doesn't have the timer and the other one doesn't have a tripod socket, I'm just going to shoot them handheld and hope that the amount of daylight I'm getting today is enough. Here are the test shots and again we have 660 on the left and Mandalorian on the right and again it's the same story. It looks like uh, 660 went with more safe exposure preserving the highlights while Mandalorian tried to get sort of a more even brightness across the scene. Um, there's also a difference between lenses. Clearly the 660 is slightly narrower again and uh, it has plenty of vignetting like you can see the corners are really dark while on the Mandalorian, there's hardly any vignetting at all. In terms of sharpness, uh, I'm not sure if it's down to the quality of the lenses or if it's down to the focusing, but it looks like the 660 managed to hit infinity and sort of focus further out better because yeah, I can just about read the name of the boat here while on the Mandalorian, that's not really possible. And yes, it did, I think it did overexpose this part of the boat a little bit as well. So I think in this case, the 660 wins for me. Enough torture. Let's put these cameras back where they belong. Poorly lit living room, humorous party portraits, flash on. Let's do this. Here come the results. Again, 660 on the left, Mandalorian on the right, and um, again, 660 uh, exposing more for the subject, darkening the background, while Mandalorian is more even. Um, I don't know, it's, it's difficult to make a call between these two be because uh, they're just different. I think uh, what 660 does is closer to what people tend to want as a sort of, you know, retro styled uh, on camera flash kind of shot. I think it's, it has that sort of retro appeal in a sense. Uh, while Mandalorian is, I think, equally valid, it's just a different style. It's much more even, it's much more, well, I don't know if modern is the right word, but yeah, I don't know, it's just different aesthetic somehow. There's nothing between them technically, you know, I think both expose correctly and both are uh, plenty sharp and have nice color, contrast, and so on. So again, a draw, and again, a matter of personal preference. For me personally, I'm a sucker for slightly retro feel of this, so I think this looks gorgeous. Um, but if you chose the Mandalorian, I think you're right in your own way as well, so. Next up, let's see how these cameras perform at a close focus distance with a static object. This will not be only a test for the lens, 
but also a test of exposure compensation because I will bracket the shots. For your information, this part of the test alone is going to cost me about 11 euro in film. Talk about expensive hobbies. The Mandalorian can focus down to 55 centimeters, while the 660 can do 60 centimeters. Um, so I'll just measure over 60 centimeters to the subject to be sure. This is a scenario in which the Mandalorian has a very useful trick up its sleeve. Because as I mentioned before, uh, you can half press the shutter release button to focus and then press it fully to take a shot. Which means that you can use the so-called focus and recompose technique. Meaning that you just take the camera, you focus on something, and then you can keep your finger half pressed and Recompose the shot, put your subject anywhere in the frame other than the center if you don't want and then take a shot and then the focus will stay where you left it because it always focuses in the center and that's important to remember. Uh, and the half press position where it focuses but doesn't take a picture is very easy to detect, it is easy to hold and also there is a sound of the lenses moving and you know when that happens you know the camera is done focusing. On the 660, we have Polaroid's back in the day rather famous Zonar autofocus, which is quite good. I think, if anything, it's a bit more accurate than the Mandalorian. <laughs> and it also focuses in the center of the frame every time. But there isn't really a half press position. There isn't really a well defined and sort of solid position in which you know the camera has focused, but does not take the picture. So focus and recompose is a bit of a hit and miss and you are safer just keeping your subject in the center of the frame. Now it's important to note here that even though both of these cameras have autofocus, it's a far cry from autofocus in the modern digital cameras or even the film cameras of late 80s and the 90s. Uh, and the main difference is that these Autofocus systems are not able to focus continuously, meaning that they can't just focus at any specific distance between their minimum focus distance and infinity. What happens instead is that there are few lenses, each of which, if it's dropped into the light path, will focus a camera at a very specific distance. And then what the camera does is that it measures the distance to the subject and chooses a lens between these drop-in lenses uh, that will focus it as closely to the measured distance as possible. But not necessarily precisely at that distance, unless you got lucky and the distance at which your subject is is exactly the same as one of these fixed focus points. So really you could think of this system as uh, an automated, thick, uh, automated zone focus system, I guess. Uh, and, you know, that's one of the reasons why uh, both back in the day and today Polaroid recommends that you use the camera most of the time with the flash on because that allows the camera to close down the aperture and at least provide the depth of field that will likely cover the, you know, the difference between the actual distance to the subject and the closest focus point that it could use. Uh, both back in the day and today Polaroid has been fairly secretive about how many of these drop-in lenses there are how and what are these precise distances at which the cameras focus. So it's a bit of a hit and miss uh, and that's why sometimes on occasion you will get a shot which will be uh, noticeably sharper than what you're used to because you just happen to click one of these uh, focus points precisely and you know all of a sudden it's much better, but 
Unfortunately, we can't do it every single time. What I like about the Mandalorian is that Polaroid actually specifies in the manual by how much the camera over and under exposes when you use exposure compensation. It's half a stop each way. What I don't like <laughs> is that it's only half a stop and it's only, uh, you know, we're not given more steps nor bigger steps, which I think would be useful considering that the dynamic range of Polaroid film is quite narrow. We can see that the Mandalorian on the top here uh, is exposing much more evenly, like there are more even steps, like I mentioned, between the underexposure, normal exposure and overexposure. For the 660, differences are not as even and, you know, there is definitely a difference between under and normal, but between normal and overexposure, I barely see any difference. As a matter of fact, I'm not entirely sure <laughs> which one I took with the normal exposure and which one I took with overexposure. You know, there's almost no, dis no difference whatsoever. So, you know, it doesn't overexpose very willingly. Uh, if we just take the, the more balanced shots, uh, then it actually looks like the reverse of our first scenario. In this case, it's the Mandalorian that exposed for the subject and darkened the background because you know, clearly saw the black cameras in the, in the center of the frame and tried to expose so that we see the detail in those cameras, which we do. Because you know, on the 660, we can not see anything. Like the, the front of the Olympus rangefinder is completely dark. We can barely see any markings on the lens and so on. Here we can clearly see things. And also it seems to be focused ever so slightly better, ever so slightly sharper. So I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and give this one to the Mandalorian. Interesting little note. As I mentioned before, uh, the 660 is not very well suited for focus and recompose. So what I did it was just you know frame the shot and then just take a picture and hope that it will detect the subject at the front, even though it's not completely in the center, and focus on it, which it did very nicely. However, when I tried to do the same thing with the Mandalorian, this is what I got. It focused very nicely on the background. You can see the photo on the wall is very sharp and nice, but this is completely out of focus. So it looks like it focuses in the center, just like the 660, but the center area in which it tries to find the subject is much smaller. So that's something to keep in mind. So just to be safe, I'd suggest using focus and recompose technique whenever possible. There is also a couple of things the Mandalorian can do, which the 660 cannot. Double exposures and selfies with the help of self-timer. So here are some examples of that. These modes work pretty well. I just think they would have made a lot more sense on a camera with a tripod socket. Now that we are done with the tests and comparisons, I think it's time to circle back to the questions from the beginning of this video. Are the new Polaroid models worth picking up? How do they compare to the 600 series? And also, is the Polaroid now in particular a sweet spot in the current Polaroid lineup? Well, as is often the case in life, the real answer to each one of those questions is... it depends. For example, if you already have one of the old Polaroid cameras and it works well and you like the results and you tend to use the camera in what I would describe as typical scenarios like the ones that we've shown in this video, then I would say don't bother because you are not going to see any perceptible increase in image quality. Yes, it's a different aesthetic, but not really a technically better image. Um, and while there are some features that are present in the new cameras and are not included in the old ones, I don't think the implementation of those features justifies the cost, at least not in this camera. Now, if you are starting with a clean slate, so you know you have no Polaroid cameras in your arsenal and you are wanting to pick one up, I would strongly suggest looking at the new models. And there is a very simple reason for that. These cameras are only available secondhand, and they've been out of production for decades at this point. Meaning that different copies 
may have gone through wildly different experience, wildly different use, storage conditions, and so on. Meaning that unless you have a chance to properly test the camera before you buy, or you can buy from a you know reputable dealer that properly tests and services cameras that they sell, it's going to be you know hit and miss. And you may have to go through a few copies before you find one that really does the job well, or you may have to service one. By the way, be aware, these cameras can't really be serviced all that much. I mean, you can clean the rollers and like the mechanical parts, but they rely very heavily on electronics and those electronics will at some point fail. And if they do, your only option is to cannibalize another camera for replacement parts or you just have a retro style doorstop. The new cameras are just a much better peace of mind in that respect because they are much more likely to work well out of the box. It's modern electronics that tend to be more reliable. There is a warranty if something goes wrong, I think two years. Um, and I think if you can afford it, I'd say spend the money. Finally, is Polaroid now the sweet spot in the current Polaroid lineup? Again, it depends. <laughs> and uh, I would say that if you want a sort of general use camera, you know, mostly for, again, typical scenarios, and you really want autofocus, well, then that's your only choice because that's the only one uh, with autofocus that they currently make. Um, however, if you don't necessarily need autofocus and or if you want more uh, creative features, and you know, better implementation of those features, for example, double exposure, self-timer, uh, light painting, and other things, I think you should look at one-step models, especially at one-step plus, because that camera uh, has a tripod socket, you know, it has better implementation of all of those features, and then it also has full manual control, you know, proper control over aperture and shutter speed. Okay, it's through a smartphone app, but it's better than nothing. So I would look at that one if you are more into, you know, more creative uh, ways of using the camera. Actually, if you want me to test that camera as well, leave a comment down below and I just might do that. Personally, I'm leaning towards selling the Mandalorian at some point. Maybe not just yet, because my girlfriend seems to like this one. Uh, but personally, I prefer the 660 because it's nicer in the hand, I like the ergonomics better, the build quality, the form factor, and also I like the slightly more retro aesthetic that it produces. So in that sense, I'm going with this one. Uh, but there is nothing wrong with the Mandalorian, and I really enjoyed using it, and like I said, I might just keep it for my girlfriend. So, there you have it. That's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, there are also links to my Facebook and Instagram down below, so join me there as well. Have a nice one.